Tonight, we've got our young voices we heard that are going to be spilling uh, some, uh, some pretty unique knowledge. Right? Please welcome uh, Scotty Thompson. These crystal chandeliers and dusty old rugs have become a symbol for everything you are and everything I don't ever want to be again. The upscale slabs of filth that you call art and eco-friendly appliances do not overshadow the squeaky stairs or cracks in the pavement. The high-definition television and endless walk-in closet do not cover up the neglected basement or untuned piano. You can hide a dead body, your ideas. You have them trapped in the furthest depths of your mind, bound them with its little chains inside a smothering closet space. Their squeals for freedom are an untapped source of progress that have been silenced by your new lifestyle. Every idea, every what if, every could have been is a curse for your conscience. This is not a house, it is a prison. And I refuse to be just another mugshot, just another inmate with the number. I don't want to be that foot in the door. Turn me away or let me into that party because this halfway bullshit isn't cutting it anymore. We lit candles and cried together. We made milkshakes at midnight and took bike rides far past our parents' pre-designated boundaries. Curfew, stop signs, and crosswalks were useless suggestions that we chose to ignore. Sarcastic rebuttals and playground scuffles defined our youth, but they will not define my adulthood! This is the second to last run. The airport curbside goodbye filled with empty embraces. I will no longer sit in restaurants waiting for the negligent server to refill my glass with hope. A house divided cannot stand, and I will not sit back and watch as your toothpick walls and viewless windows come to collapse. I would rather take my chances in a cold, one-person tent on the unevenly cut lawn than stay one more minute in this facade of a mansion that you call home. I'm going to walk away with my self-love, knowing my situation's not great. I picked my poison. While you chose to sink, I chose to swim. So please give a big round of applause for Lila Rodriguez. <laughs> Her smooth skin sends salutations to a world she hasn't yet met. Knuckles walk across creek rocks. No, sorry. Knuckles walk across her hand the same way she hops across creek rocks with uncoordinated grace and beauty. A ruby in the rough, waiting to be discovered, shaped, polished, her weathered fingernail polish is bright colors stolen from my bureau. But it's okay. Her likeness of me is pure flattery. She melts the hearts of boys who don't quite know what their palpitations mean, and I assume she doesn't either. But she can control, wrap them around her finger, step into their minds and emotions. She wipes her feet on the doormat before entering the place that harbors their nefarious innocence. Grown up so beautifully, everyone sees her now as a blossom she's become, the daisy that no one watched sprout. I'm surprised and proud of my pocket-sized companion. No longer small enough to hide away from the world, I told her to go to school, get her grades up. I didn't know what else to tell her. She's never been the best of spellers, but her thoughts tend to stick. And she's walked away with this. She whoa, sorry. She walked away without the slightest worry across her face. Carefully painted fingernails, the delicate extension of herself, the free the fingers of free thinking and passion. I asked her 
if she was ready. But she looked away and then began walking down the cobblestone. Paused, not out of hesitation, but with a deep breath that plunges her into the life that she's been waiting for. No one can pluck her from the soil or forget to water her because she will always find the sun. And I admire that part of her more than she knows. She looks back with a fire, fiery glow on her face. And her smooth hands summon me to follow her. She's ready to meet the world. But she would like to introduce her sister, would like to introduce herself with her sister by her side. So please give a big round of applause for Ian Martell. Disregarding demeanors quite a treacherous, tyrannical tot, used to the presence of a full cup and the horrific bounce of an empty one off the cold, white tile kitchen floor. The contents of the sippy cup vary, depending on the vast variety of emotions in store from the thirsty young soul seeking to quench, it, quench its evanescent yet dependably constant drought. With every nuance and attitude comes a different flavor from the cup. If he is tired, it contains warm milk that insidiously stacks on the way to his drooping habits. When he is out savoring the sunshine of a thousand naive smiles, the bittersweet pulp of lemonade occupies the magically clean, though questionably lacking, the previous night's milk. Vacuous space that is drained ever so quickly by the familiar lips of the boy who really needs it. And when the cup has no more imbued wisdom to give, when its hearty flow becomes insubstantial, when its lid too tightly seals the greedily desired contents, now impatiently sucked through, it is cast away, saved in a desolate space designated for the next one, awaiting the conception of its next set of lips, eyes, fingers, stubby teeth. For what good is its airtight seal, its tumble-resistant plastic, its dishwasher-safe skeleton, heated and dried far, for far too long to still be run on fragile when, no one, when it has no one who drinks it so impatiently, no one who throws it to the ground without second thought upon finishing its contents, no one who paces in front of the dishwasher awaiting the next moment. All of you, please put your hands together and welcome up um, this Kaya Plaka. Why words aren't always helpful. One, examples of me kind of look like I love you. I love you, I still love you, I want you. I'm under you, I'm in you, I'm over you, I wanted you, I was sorry, I'm sorry, I'm still sorry too. I'm the things that nightmares are made of. Maybe I'm sitting on your bedside table, shining my ugly face at you between the ball of aspirin and the picture of your father. Maybe you placed me in the shoebox you hide at the top of your closet where you can forget about me on your good days. Maybe you even placed me gingerly under your pillow a little closer to your nightmares. Maybe I just get caught up in the web above your bed. Maybe I never get out of there. Wrapped around every thread of your protection, wrapped around your neck like a boa constrictor. Yeah, I can choke you up, looking for the right knee, which you always find too late in between the creases of your morning paper, the black and white spots. I'll be expired. You won't be able to use me anymore. But you'll be damn happy to see me because I'll reassure you that you still have me locked and loaded between your lips out with ammunition that's still full of your fire. I may be empty now, but you can still make me three. I am what tossing and turning is made of. 
Cold, hot, twisted sheet nights where you can't figure out what happened to me. Cold, hot, stomach twisted into knots why couldn't you find me when you needed me. Cold, hot, blood running through your veins every time that I was used against you. I'm the kind of weapon that kills without the courtesy of leaving marks. Plenty of soft spots, but nothing to show for it for. I'm filling in your therapist's notepad, turning you into psychoanalytical homework. But no matter how many different ways I come out of her pen, I never do myself justice for what I've done to you five. I'm a prescription for enough pills to kill yourself with six. I'm plastered across every tombstone in the world, seven. Guilty. The jury's verdict, guilty. Never stops running through your head, guilty. Every time you look out between those bars, guilty. How many innocent men do you think are locked away, not guilty? Another silent statistic, eight. I'm what you didn't say to the only person you will ever love before they left you forever. Nine. I'm every agreement to go to war. 10. Kurt Cobain's last letter ended with, I love you, I love you. How many last letters end with, I love you? I still love you. I want you. I'm under you, I'm in you, I'm over you, I wanted you, I was sorry, I'm sorry, I'm still sorry. 11. I'm every lie you ever told. 12. I'm every gossiping girl too shallow to just swim in her own life. 13. I'm the beeping message on the answering machine full of unheard versions of me you never wanted getting out. 14. I'm every lie you ever heard. 15. I'm haunting every memory scribbled in every diary, saying in every sad song, every play-by-play -play of time that should have gone better. 16. You are standing in a room full of luggage. I am that luggage. And when you pick me, you have to carry me with you to travel with forever. 17. I am every regret that you didn't let that silence stay.